Acts 16, verse 4 and verse 5. This is uh, Paul's second missionary journey. The Bible says, And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them the decrees. That is, the, the, this was the, what, what the apostles had agreed to in Jerusalem to be given, to be handed over to the church, the churches of the Gentiles. And these were the decrees. They should abstain from uh, blood, um, meat with blood. Um, circumcision is not an issue. Um, they should abstain from uh, fornication and so on and so forth. And that was the decrees they sent. So I read verse 4 again. And as they went through the cities, they delivered to them, that is to the Gentiles, the decrees to keep, which were determined by the apostles and elders at Jerusalem. Now verse 5 is crucial. So the churches were what? Strengthened in the faith and increased in number daily. I'd like you to note what was the issue for the church in verse 5. The issue was the strengthening of their faith. The issue of numbers was a direct result of a strength or a strengthening of their faith. So I want to, I want to make some, some statements and I pray that the Lord will help me as I make these statements. The word of grace, because that was what that message was. It was a message of grace to the churches. That you no longer need to keep the laws, the Jewish laws, to be right with God. The grace of God that has appeared to all men teaches us that we should what? We should deny what? Ungodliness and worldliness. But that we should live how? Soberly, righteously, in this present so this is the word of grace that came to them. It is a word that, necessi that necessarily would increase faith. If the word of grace or the word of God or the word of faith does not increase your faith, it is not the word of God. It is not the word of grace. It is not a word of faith. It must strengthen your faith. If therefore, remember what I said at the beginning, it was this word, this strengthening of the faith that gave rise to the numbers increasing daily. Do you understand that? Now, does it mean that we will not have increase in numbers without the word of grace? It is possible. So where we have increase in the church or in a meeting, not based on the word of grace, but based on the trickery of men, based on adverts and so on and so forth, it is not accepted by God. That is not church growth. Church growth is not necessarily about numbers. Church growth is primarily about strengthening of the individual's faith. A church, I've told you before, that a church is as strong as the weakest member in that church. So where a church is packed full of sinners, that is a very, very weak church. It is in such churches that you find Satan at ease. But where there is increase in the faith of the believers in a meeting, it will necessarily bring about increase in numbers. I've said this before and I continue to say it. Our focus must never be on growing in numbers. Our focus must always be in growing in faith. Because if we grow in faith, we will, we will, it's a natural progression. We will grow in numbers. If my faith is strong enough to speak to somebody about the salvation of Jesus Christ, people will come to the Lord. But if I don't have faith enough to speak to somebody about the salvation of Jesus Christ, even if I invited him to church, nothing is going to happen. Because at the end of the day, the message that he's hearing, he will hear only in church. He cannot, I cannot follow him up. I can do nothing with him. I'm in the same environment with him. And he sees me struggling with sin. But he came to church and heard a message that says that if you surrender your life to Christ, you will have no business struggling with sin. But you are still struggling with sin because your faith has not increased. Then nothing has happened to that man. So that the, the, the function of the church of God must always be to seek to increase or strengthen the faith of each believer. It was the focus of the apostles. It was the focus of the Lord. And still is the focus. Romans chapter 1 verse 8. Romans chapter 1 verse 8. Paul the apostle is writing to a church that he had never visited before. And we are going to see some of the things that he, one of the crucial things he noted about that church. Verse 8, are we there? First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all. That what? Your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. He didn't say your numbers spoken out throughout the whole world. He didn't say your membership growth is spoken out throughout the whole world. He didn't say your wealth 
It's spoken of throughout the whole world. It didn't say that the fact that you have powerful politicians in the church is spoken of throughout the whole world. No, he said your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. A church is known by the faith of the people in it. At least that is how heaven acknowledges the church. I, I thank God for some of the things we heard in the course of the prayers. How God took somebody and began to show him the, what the church is and what the church ought to be. In Ephesians chapter 1, again, I want us to note, I, 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 want, to read, um, uh, I, I want to read a portion that will, that will enable us to have a grasp of the point that we are trying to stress concerning the faith of the believer. So I'll, I'll, I'll read it a little uh, further away. Let's take it from verse 11. Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 11. In him that is in Lord Jesus Christ also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. When you see the word trusted, we are talking of faith. Verse 13. In him you also trusted. That is your faith is in Christ. After you heard the word of truth, you see what the word of God did? What did he do? It brought faith to them. The gospel of your salvation. In whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. These were the issues for the apostles of old. It must be the issues for us. I'm not talking of the Holy Spirit of just speaking in tongues and still living in sin. We are speaking of a person who speaking in tongues matches the lifestyle of holiness. We're not talking of somebody who is speaking in tongues and yet is living in, ab in, in, in abject sin. Who, that is this Holy Spirit, is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. The coming of the Holy Spirit into our lives is not just to make us speak in tongues, but is to keep us as we ought to be kept until that day when the Lord Jesus will return and find us as we are. So he becomes not only our protector, and protection but he's also there to teach us the bible says that he's our teacher teaching us everything that we ought to know about how to live and relate with god and the lord jesus christ in verse 15 he says therefore i also after i heard of what your faith in the lord jesus and your love for all the saints do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers it was an issue the faith of the believers. First Thessalonians. This was the church that was started after a very short visit to Thessalonica. In fact, they didn't stay long before they were, they were, they were run out of town and then they went to Berea. I'm going to read a few verses in chapter 1 and then I'll read chapter 2 as well. And you're going to see the matter of faith because look, whether we like it or not, I was, I was thinking of writing an article some time back, recently actually, titled, This Thing We Call Church. Because that is what it, what it is, a thing. It is not church. But let's discuss this one now. First Thessalonians chapter 1, from verse 2. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers. Look at verse 3. Remembering without ceasing what? Your work of faith. Faith has works. Faith is not just something we speak. It is seen by the works that we do. Your work of faith, labor of love. When they labor, they labor out of love, not out of compulsion. Nobody forced them to labor. They labored because they loved the Lord, not because they loved the pastor, not because they loved the church denomination, but because they loved God. And patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God, of our God and Father. They were patient in their hope. They were not wanting to know when is this thing going to happen now? When will the rapture take place? They patiently waited in that hope that they had. That if definitely they were going to be with the Lord. Look at verse 5. Sorry, uh, verse 4. Knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. They were so certain of these things and you could see it in their, in their lifestyle. That is what Paul was writing about. He remembered it. They didn't stay long. But he remembered how their, their faith had works. He remembered how they labored out of love. And how they patiently hoped on the Lord. In verse 5 he said, For our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit, in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. I may need to pause here a little bit. But let, let, me, let me finish. I, I pray I will come back to verse 5. 
In verse 6 says, And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much what? Affliction with joy of the Holy Spirit. Have you seen how they received it? There was affliction and yet there was joy. In the, they had joy even though they received it in much affliction because it was the place where Paul and his colleagues were being persecuted and they were preaching the word. And these people received it. Look at verse 7. It says, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. I, let, me, let me just read it. I, I pray I'll remember and, and look at verse 5 again. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out so that we do not need to say anything. For they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you. The faith of the Thessalonian church was an expression of the kind of message they received from Paul and his companions. And how it was preached to them. He said, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, for the who delivers you, us, rather, from the wrath to come. Let me pause there and let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I want to read from verse 1. Because the church is becoming an entertainment center. And until we understand what the church is, we would actually go to, go to a meeting every Sunday for the rest of our lives and go to hell. 